Yes, I do enjoy fine art. Thank you for noticing. There's a certain raw beauty to it that modern painters often fail to recreate. I always wanted to be an artist myself, but it'll be a long time before I can call myself that. I often say that patience are my canvas, but my job is more about restoration. Obviously, I look at the damaged human minds and bring them back to their former beauty. I'm sorry, I'm probably boring you. No, it's not that. It's just... It's been a difficult couple of days. I'd really like to go home. Of course, and go home you will. As soon as we've done this little assessment, okay, you probably know how it works. I've read in your file you used to be a nurse. Yes, I know very well how it works. You want to check if I'm nuts. Well, I wouldn't use that expression, obviously. But yes, we have to make sure you're safe and figure out how to help you. Also, as a nurse yourself, you know there's always paperwork involved. These forms won't fill themselves. Honestly, Susan, you have nothing to worry about. This is just a formality. I could tell straight away that you are not nuts. Fine. What would you like to know? I will answer all your questions. Then I'll go home, take a long shower, and catch up on sleep. Wonderful. Let's see then. Where do we begin? She's awake, Doctor. Good evening. It's good to see you awake at last. You're in the Cedar Lake Hospital. My name is Andrew. I'm one of the doctors. Could you confirm your name for me, please? Hmm. I can see you're very tired and sleepy. That's perfectly normal. You're on the ward now. Your condition is stable. Earlier on, we did a CT scan and it shows there's no permanent damage to your brain. All your organs are fine too. You're a very lucky lady, Susan. You might experience extreme tiredness and lethargy for a couple of days, but that should soon pass. I would advise plenty of rest now. The nurses on this ward will take it from here. Please, let them know if you need anything. Take care, Susan. Yeah? Please, don't try to speak. What did you say? Don't worry, Mrs. Ashworth. Your arm is fine. No, no, no. There was nothing wrong with your arm, darling. Now calm down. Would you like me to get you some water? Let me get you a drink. I'll be back in a second. I'm sorry, Susan. Did I wake you? I have to take your blood pressure. Two seconds and I'm gone. My name is Liz, by the way. I... I'm sorry. I know this isn't very nice. Believe me, I hate waking people up just for this. But being a nuisance is part of my stupid job, unfortunately. Oof, I hate this place. Tell you what, Susan. Can I call you Susan? So anyway, I shouldn't say it, but... You know I'm going to, anyway. You are so lucky. It's crazy. You, doing what you've done, and her, walking in, seeing what she saw. That was a chance. One in a million. I'm not making any sense again, am I? I'm tired. They're working us to death here, you know. Modern day slavery. One day I'll tell them what I really think. I swear I will. Ah, and here it is. You've got the blood pressure of an 18-year-old. Just wanted to say you're lucky, I think. And that I hope you've changed your mind about some things. Got to go, but I'll see you later. You take care, sweetheart, yeah?
Bad dream. Yeah, a really bad one. I knew it. I could see as soon as I came in the room that you were having a nightmare. I guess I shouldn't have woken you up. What was it about? I was burnt alive. Actually, it reminds me of something that happened the other day. There was this woman on the emergency unit, and she really wanted to smoke, you know? But they wouldn't let her, of course. She wasn't well at all, not just injured, but not right in the head. She was on 10 litres of oxygen, through the face mask. She had to stay in bed, she was told. But she wouldn't listen, of course, and as soon as they'd left, she lit up a fag. The whole room went up in flames, and so did she. I guess you didn't really want to know that, did you? That's just me and my big gob. Typical. I never know when to shut up. What was your name again? I forgot to introduce myself, didn't I? I always do that. So sorry, Susan. My name is Elizabeth. But you can call me Liz, like everyone else. You're here a lot. Every time I open my eyes, I see you. They make auxiliaries to crazy hours here. Seriously, I feel like I've got no life sometimes. I'll be here till the morning. To be honest, I keep coming here to hide. Please don't give me away. I just want to rest my legs for two minutes, that's all. What happened to me? Well, how much do you remember? I... I took some pills, and I fell asleep in the chair. I remember how the room kept spinning around me slowly. I felt so calm, and then... All of a sudden, I was on the field of barley. It was great at first. I felt happy. I was free. But it soon got worse. There was this tunnel, but there was no light at the end of it, only darkness. Then I got lost in the woods. There was my dead body hanged on the tree, a burning car, and a crow, and a deer. I heard something behind the trees, but I didn't dare to look. Then I found the house. The old woman who lived there, I think she was death. Or maybe she was the devil, I'm not sure. She said they call her the Queen of Maggots. She said I should go back, gave me another chance. And so, here I am. Weird dream, eh? Maybe it wasn't a dream. I really believe in that sort of stuff. It's not impossible. It felt real, but it was just a dream. Can you now tell me who found me and what happened? Well. Your body went into a coma. You were lucky she came home and found you. I told you that before. What? Who found me? Your daughter, of course. She called an ambulance. If it wasn't for her, you'd sure be dead now, Susan. My daughter? Yes. Why? Why do you look so pale all of a sudden, Susan? I don't have a daughter. Whoever she is, she lied. But... Why would she do that? How should I know? I was in a coma, apparently. So she lied. It doesn't change the fact that you owe her your life. I was fine. I didn't ask for any help. Sorry. When will they let me go home? I'm not sure. Probably not today. Maybe tomorrow. Look, I shouldn't say that. But you seem like a nice person. I feel like I should warn you. There's this doctor here. They call him Dr. X. He's a chief of psychiatry in this hospital. You won't be able to go home until he's talked to you. And he... He's really good at getting into your head. You know what I'm saying? He will ask you a lot of tricky questions. But he's a really great guy. You should trust him. I'm tired. Let me sleep now. Fine. I'll see you again. Be careful who you trust here, Susan. They will be watching you. How do I know you're not one of them? 
You don't. But do I really look like a bad person to you? I... I don't know. Maybe not. I'll see you tonight. Remember what I said. Dreams are just dreams. But when they turn into nightmares, it's good to have someone there to pinch your arm and wake you up. Right? We'll start with a little chat about your childhood. I want you to be as honest as possible. It's important if we want to get to the bottom of your problem. Count to ten and tell me when you're ready, Susan. This isn't all about whether you're nuts or not, like we said before. It's about finding what has caused how you're feeling now and creating a working solution. In order to achieve that, I need to get to know you better. Can we talk about your childhood first? Your parents. When you're a child, your life revolves around them. What was your father like? Did you have a good relationship with him? I was brought up without a father. I understand he wasn't there when you were growing up. Can you tell me why? What happened to him? He... left when I was little. One night he just packed his suitcase and left. I was about eight at the time. He didn't say goodbye, didn't even look at me. I remember watching him walk away. It was winter getting dark early. He just disappeared into the night, and I never saw him again. Let's talk about your mother now. What was she like? Would you care to tell me about her? I lost her when I was still a child. So you lost your mum as well? I'm sorry, I didn't realize. What happened? She... Abandoned me. I just wish I knew why. She never tried to contact me or anyone in her family. No letters, no phone calls, nothing. She can be dead as far as I know. I grew up pretty much alone. Had to fend for myself. Learned a thing or two along the way. My Aunt Millie took me in and looked after me for a while. She was all right, but never really grew to love me like her own child. What she did, she did out of pity, but she always put her own children first. Okay, I'm beginning to get a better picture. That's enough about your parents for now. Let's take two minutes and we will talk about something else. I need to get out of this place. I hate hospitals. Besides, I really want to go home and forget all about this. Please do not touch these. They are all confidential documents. Yeah? 
Well, maybe you shouldn't leave them out on the desk for everyone to see. If you are looking for something to read, we have some magazines for patients here. Thanks, but I think I'll pass. I've got enough gloves in my pocket. There's no need to take more. Hello? I guess I should wait my turn. Hello? I feel much better now. Can you please discharge me? I'm glad to hear that. But I can't discharge you until Dr. X sees you. He should be doing his round very soon. Please return to your bed and wait for him, all right? Is Liz here? And who's Liz? That young nurse who was here last night. Black hair. Very chatty. She said her name was Liz. Uh, I'm sorry. A lot of people come through here. I can't remember everyone's name. Can you return to your bed now, please? It's nearly time for your medication. I can't be chasing around after every single patient. Beg your pardon? Look, I'm very busy at the moment. I'll come and talk to you in a minute, all right? Hello? I... Can I make a phone call, please? Oh, yes, of course. But the phone's being used at the moment. Can you please come back in five minutes? Thanks. I'd like to go home now. Well, so would I. But there are procedures and a system in place. I can't just let you go like that. What? Look, I'm very busy at the moment. I'll come and talk... Excuse me, where's the exit? It's just down the corridor, ma'am. Thanks. I'll be on my way then. Can I see the discharge letter first? A discharge letter? What for? Some of our patients are under observation and aren't allowed out of the ward. For their own safety, of course. It sounds like we're prisoners here. It's for the patient's safety, ma'am. If you haven't been discharged by the doctors, I'm afraid I can't let you through. May I ask what your name is? My name is... Mary Smith. Let me through, please. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do for you, ma'am. You should talk to the doctor first and come back with a letter and some form of identification. Please do not touch these. They are all confident- I was only going to tidy up. I'm sorry, are you one of the housekeepers? Why did you dress up as a patient? I just can't stand mess, that's all. And there's no need to be sarcastic. Who's being sarcastic?
Hi, are you all right? Can we talk for a minute? I can't talk. Please, just leave me alone. Oh, I mean you no harm. I'm trapped here, just like you. Trapped? I don't know. It's just so hard to think without it. But you're a stranger. And you're not one of those lovely nurses either. They look after me so well. I trust the nurses like I trusted my mother. I just want to talk. I need your help. Unless it's mother who sent you. Was it her? Please tell me it was her. Um, yeah, sure. I'm a good friend of your mother. I miss her so much. I can't remember you very well. But you should know this. If you really are a friend, you will know my mother's name. The name that haunts me. A beautiful name. Yeah, sure I do. Now, let me ask you. What is it? Oh, well... What is my mother's name? Hmm... Uh... Mandy. No, you're wrong. Leave me alone. Please, just leave me alone. Someone is coming. Have you rang the bell? Is there an emergency? I'm feeling a bit woozy. Are you really? You look fine to me. No, I I'm really not feeling well. Fine, I'll call the doctor for you. But I can't help it if he's busy and can't get here straight away. In the meantime, I know how to make you feel better. I think it's time we give you some medication. Can you please tell me your name and your date of birth? Mind your own business. I'm not taking anything. I don't think so, darling. Now, you really don't have to lie. We're only trying to help, you know. Now, let me have a quick look at your name, band. Miss Ashworth. I strongly suggest you take this, all right? Are you insane? I'm not taking any medication. I'm not ill. Okay, we are prepared for this. Jim, can you come in, please? You must be kidding me. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm going to give you an injection. You'll feel a sharp scratch. Hold it for me, would you? Go back to your room and rest. You'll be able to relax and have a great sleep.
The drugs have worn off and I feel better now. But I can't let them do that to me again. I need to get out of here. If you really are a friend, you will know the name that ha But I know it. Sheila. Yes. It was my mother who sent you, after all. I'm sorry I didn't believe you. But my head's all messed up. So, let's have a little chat, sweetheart. Something's wrong with this place. I think it's really nice here. We must stay here. Do what they say. Take pills they give us. Sometimes, if I behave, they give me the red stuff. I wait for it. I'm being good. What is this red stuff? It's a drug. My favourite one. Red stuff takes the pain away. I must stay here. Good nurses have been most kind. They always remember. They know I'm suffering. But it is not the same as the drugs I see in my dreams. On the other side of the mirror, there's a spider's heart full of drugs. I just can't seem to find it anymore. I see. Feel like sharing? What's your name? There is nothing to share. Everyone died. Everyone. And my treat, my red stuff, it's not the same. I keep lying to myself. I'm a mean little liar. Always have been. This vein, you see, it goes straight to my heart. That's why it hurts so much. I wish I could, just one more time. But it's all lost now. Everything. I was always happy to settle for a consolation prize, you know? What exactly is this little treat you mentioned? It's the red teardrop of pure happiness. They bring it, I drink it down, and my pain goes away. Without it, I just feel so angry. It's like I'm going crazy. <laughs> it's funny, but I just get so fucking angry sometimes. I'm dying, I think. We're all dying, I heard. She said I'd go to hell for it, but I didn't do anything. I didn't know. Does he know? Who? Him! Right. Okay. No, probably not. I need the red medicine. I need it now. I must be a good girl. I must be a nice girl. Maybe I could get you some of that stuff. Do you know where they- Oh, they have it hidden. Or well, maybe you can. I see it in my dreams some- But in my dream, I see it. It's so near. I can still hear the- Are you alright? I'm fine. Yes, it's all fine. It's just hard to wait, you know? They said I can have it. You know, yeah? So I wait here. Don't want to miss it. That nurse promised it to me. The one with the red glasses. But I think it's been three hours already. Why are they late? Do you think something happened? Do you think she changed her mind? Because I swear if she did, I will hurt myself again. I swear to God, I will hurt myself again. I'm sure they'll be here in a minute. They're probably just very busy, that's all. I'll talk to you later, yeah? Yes, go. Be careful, they're watching us. And remember, we must be nice to earn the red stuff. Always be nice. Poor woman. So, let's have a little ch- I'll talk to you later, yeah? Yes, go. 
Be careful, they're watching us. And remember, we must be nice to earn the red stuff. Always be nice. Poor woman. Thank you. 